Live from the Export Beer Garden Studios, this is the Agenda Podcast for Monday the 10th of June. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. Uh, G'day there, welcome along to a Monday, the Agenda Podcast, proudly brought to you by Export Ultra, the beer for here. What it's great to be Monday, Matt Heath. Yeah, it is, and so you've, good. like Friday, not the best day of your life, you've got to say? like Oh, yeah, look... <sighs> I mean, we've got a lot of feedback on, on Friday's podcast, and we'll get to those in yours, please. A record amount of yours, please, is sent through. Uh, good and bad. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, let's just say it was a, a prime example of turning a win into a loss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was a very emotional weekend all yeah. round. I, I imagine it would have been for, for you on that Friday podcast. I thought we turned – a loss into a win with that podcast. I've had a lot of great feedback on that but that podcast. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's look, some some bits that I've asked to be deleted from it that yeah. weren't. But um, <laughs> but you know that's just the way the cookie cookie crumbles in the media industry, and you just, you just take the legal slings and arrows as they arise. Yeah, I mean, and that's what a podcast is. It's just raw raw uh, raw audio, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's why hundreds of thousands of people flock to this daily agenda for yeah. a couple of really hungover dudes just digging themselves deeper into holes. Yeah, well, we, we, we actually came back a bit later in that day. We went along to the Empire Tavern and yeah. had a few more. <laughs> yeah. And I ended up riding my bike home really steamed later on that night, which was a bit of a... That's a good effort. It was a good effort. It was risky. Yeah, I got a... I, got a I was sing, singing um, a song really loudly. As I was, You always know that you've had a few when you're singing. You know, you don't really sing. You sing in cycle. You know, I sing in cycle, you know. Do you, have, do you have earpods in or are you just singing out loud? I was just singing out loud. That's like, you should be driving the meth lanes on K Road. Yeah, it was, it, it was insanity, yeah. It was insanity. Yeah. I was at pace through the meth lanes on K Road singing, you know, like a drunken Irishman. I had a, I had a few physical scars I had to deal with as well as emotional over the, over the weekend as well because obviously pantsman Joel Harrison tackled me into a bush on uh, Thursday night as well. There's some deeds of develop, developments on that as well. And yeah, Pantsman said that his, his suit's covered in mud. Yeah. And I, apparently you guys were involved in some mud wrestling, you and the notorious Pantsman, Joel, Joel Harrison, at some point. Look, I I had to tell my kids about the, the, the quite significant uh, scratch or scar yeah, that's yeah. running across to add to the other scars on my forehead. Yeah, and, I mean, if people don't know, you've been going through a <laughs> long-term battle with cancer and then there was a lot of plastic surgery and, and reconstructive surgery that needed to be... Yep. Done at, at, a, at a huge cost, your forehead. So, I mean, it is a little bit controversial when you just jump into a bush and slice, <laughs> slice that work that a lot of plastic surgeons have done right, right across, you know? Yeah, look, I mean, that bush was getting smart and it needed yeah. a hiding. Yeah. So I gave it one. Yeah. And then the, the Notorious Pants Man. Because I heard that you were abusing the Notorious Pants Man from the bush. And he's, oh, I was. Is he actually just... He's come back. He's, he's, come he's, on he's dived into He's finished out. the tackle off. <laughs> he's come in NRL style with the uh, forearm yeah. into the bush and just finished me <laughs> off. And look, I don't blame him. The Pants Man was trying to give me a hand and get me home. And then I ended up roundly abusing him. Yeah. Um, but look, look, I think things... Think things have it's been four days now since, since yeah. the incident. So I so think, much sport in that four days. Oh, so much, but also so much great sport. Yeah. Also so much bad sport. Yeah. As I mean, well. If we're going to start with the bad sport, you've got to say the Oof. Black Caps' performance against Afghanistan was oh. about as bad as I've ever seen us. And we we, we go like, what's well, a T twenty? It's a lottery. But I mean, that was just. It wasn't good. That was not good. It was in the in the immortal words of an ACC member lost in London, uh, with no. Uh, pants. It's not good, Maddie. It, it's not good. It's, it's not, not good. Um, that was a tough watch. It was a tough commentary as well on Sky Sport 9. It, it kind of Any kickback on some of the things we were saying on that commentary at all? Any kickback? No, I don't think so. I oh, mean, okay, there was a couple of references to, you know, Afghanistan, invasions of Afghanistan yeah, yeah. and hostility towards them and, you know. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, no kickback as yet, yeah, but yeah. it's early days on a Monday, so... Yeah. I don't usually get complaints. Just, yeah, they, you know, they come to, and they start formulating yeah. complaints about 9 a.m. Yes. and then they sort of start to trickle through around 11 and yep. by 1, 2 in the afternoon, it's a, it's a flood of yep. outraged people and <laughs> well, yeah, sponsors and, yeah. um, it takes, and broadcasters. It takes, it takes a morning of manifestation yeah. to then lead into – and usually it's run through legal as well and yeah. then, it come, then it arrives on my desk. So we're not out of the woods mm. completely. But that was – to be completely outplayed in every facet of the uh-huh. game – by a team like Afghanistan who... They played all the cricket. All of it. Yeah. All of it. They, they batted well. They bowled well. I mean, they fielded well. They just owned us from the start, and it was mildly depressing. Yeah, it was, because I actually thought this might be the 
um, banana peel and teal. I, I, I had it in my mind that this one might be a problem, but not to the level it was. I thought they might just strangle us and it'd be close and they beat us. I thought there was a possibility. I yeah. mean, obviously, I, we, we were heavily favoured, but they just they just smoked us in, yeah. in every way. And you got to, I don't know, Jesus Christ. Goo Bears, he's being interviewed afterwards. Oh, the Bears. The Bears. Bears are, and he's saying, you know, it's pretty difficult out there. He scored 80, and he was still saying it's rough out there. That's what gave me the heebies, because yeah. remember, we, we saw that interview, and I went, uh, oh, God. Yeah, but uh, Finn Allen didn't see that interview, did he? No. Because he went out and thought, I don't need to get the measure of this wicket. I'll just assume I can smoke that for six off the four, first ball I faced. Uh, yeah, it's bringing back all sorts of trauma. But yep. look, we are the original uh, members of the Black Cap Supporter Support yep. Group, and we take these on the chin. We get together as a group. Uh, we hold each other. We tell each other that the black caps hurt us and we move on. Yeah, and we short the market by selling 184 black caps supporter support <laughs> group T-shirts during the coverage. Yeah. Um, for a further breakdown of the of this match, and they're going to go deep on it, the BYC are back for the T20 World Cup specials. So uh, uh, Jason Hoyt, Dylan Cleaver, Paul Ford, I'm sure they have got plenty to say about well, that game. Well, I was actually looking at our pool when we first got it, and I thought, oh, that's good, we're just through. But now... Is looking terrifying facing the West Indies. Yeah, in West Indies. Yeah, so and their home ground, and they're actually looking a bit better now. Yeah, the, and they I mean, they're almost just about through as well because they've won their first two games. Yeah, so too of Afghanistan. Yeah, um, so, so we've New lost Zealand's our first. massively on the back foot, and plus our run differential's terrible. Oh. I mean, we're all going to smoke the the Papua New Guinea pigs, you know that, and they got the Uganda, Uganda, but losing to Afghanistan, boy. A lot of pressure on us now. Yeah, so, but this has been a bizarre World Cup. Yeah, it's anyone's apart I mean, from Australia, who look dangerously good. Yeah, I mean, even that game between India and Pakistan this morning in New York on that pop-up pitch in the pop-up stadium, which looked beautiful actually. It was absolutely yeah. rammed with blue t-shirts. It looked amazing. But even that, that everyone was struggling on that wicket. They I mean, defend- India got one hundred and seventeen, I believe. Yeah, they and defended, defended it. it. And then Canada have beaten Ireland. Yeah. So, you know, Ireland are almost knocking on tier one status. Yeah. And Canada beat them. Obviously, the USA beat Pakistan also over the weekend. India beats Pakistan. So Pakistan are pretty much uh, are maybe out because USA could be through. They just need to win the rest of their pool games. Um, so it is one of the World Cups, and it's a bizarre one. Mentioned, and Jerry mentioned it this morning on the Matt and Jerry show on Hodaki. It has been played in the most, most like distant lands. It's yeah. Texas, New York. Like Guyana, uh, you I mean know, Guyana's the, in South America, oh, yeah. and then and then sometimes you're in the West Indies. Yeah, it's it's everywhere, <laughs> and no one can get their handle on what's what to expect. Well, all, all I can say is spin is playing a big part, and we have got Mitchell Satner. Yeah, that's it. We have got Michael Bracewell. Yeah, but everyone else seems to have a real weapon. Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone else seems to have a weapon that you're like, oh God, wait yeah. till he comes on. Yeah. So, anyway. It's a little bit concerning. A little bit concerning. Anyway, we, it's back again on Thursday. At midday, we've got the West Indies. Uh, good timings. Just knock off on a, on a Thursday afternoon and listen to our com- coverage on Sky Sport 9. Oh, how good. And, uh, yeah, but um, like I said, if you want to deep dive into that, then uh, tune into the BYC podcast later S- today. Super Rugby played out as everyone expected it. It did, actually. Chiefs um, smoked the Reds. Blues smoked the Drua. And, uh, well, I, I was pushing for a late um, let's support the Highlanders because in 2016 they went over there and beat the Brumbies, but they did not. Yes. So now it's Blues, Brumbies, and it's Hurricanes, Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, that was part of the emotional roller coaster I went yeah. on. Matt Heath was obviously the, the, the high of Thursday night and winning awards to the low of waking up on the couch in the studio to thousands of messages from my, my partner. But, I mean, the support you got from your friends must have helped you through I, that. That didn't really help me through it. But then – I uh, then I called the Chiefs game, Chiefs Reds, and they the Mana Bus absolutely steamrolled the Reds. That was playoffs Chiefs Mana. Do you think the Mana Bus is is peaking at the right time to beat the Hurricanes down at the Caketon? I hope so because the Hurricanes didn't look great for forty five minutes in Wellington against uh, the Rebels. Yeah, they looked average. They lowered themselves to the Rebels' standards. They couldn't deal with. They were getting roughed up, and their lineout was shocking. Um, the Rebels. So the Rebels were sent into. Um, you know, into the ether though they're gone. Oh, the, the abyss. Oh, mm-hmm. they would have torn Wellington an absolute new one that yeah. night. Like they, and we said at the end of the country, the we said goodbye, goodbye rebels. You have no brand equity to protect tonight. If yeah. you could be front page, you could be doing some awful stuff tonight. Yeah, and it'll be all over social media. 
and there's no repercussions. It's a double jeopardy situation. You'd be stupid not to do a, <laughs> yeah. get involved in a league style bubbler. <laughs> yeah, totally. It'd be idiotic to not do it. You're never going to get another chance again. Like you'll yeah. be, I'm sure that a lot of those players they'll go and play in the in the UK. They'll play in France. They might get some gigs in Japan. Yeah. And this is the last time that those Rebels players will ever be able to have absolute immunity. They're basically the Ecuadorian um, embassy. Yeah. With Julia Assange it. and them, do whatever you want. So they uh, they they frustrated the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes ended up. Like the last thirty minutes, they, they ran away with it, but they frustrated them for a very long time. So, so because I know the Blues desperately want the Chiefs to beat the Hurricanes. Oh yeah, just to get a home final. Yep, and, and that, that's a big thing for them. And um, uh, did you see the crowd in Wellington? Half the stadium was uh, they, they did the thing where they shut off. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe maybe six sections, and there was one particular shot near the end where he was doing the conversion, and you like the camera shot, <laughs> you could not see one single person in the wide shot of the conversion. Uh, just a bunch of banners trying to fill seats. That's a pretty sad state of affairs when you've well, got well, a quarterfinal. The, well, the, um, there was a decent crowd at Eden Park. Yeah, and Hamilton, there was yeah. half decent as well. So, I mean, it's actually such a wounder. I'm not, I'm not letting Wellington off the hook here. But it is, A, really, even though that they frustrated them, was a result that was never in doubt because the Rebels are yeah. going to disappear forever. But also walking across that concourse. It was a beautiful day, though. Right. It was. There was no excuses on that front. There's no excuses on that front. You know when front? they bone on about you can't yeah. put Wellington on a good day? Well, you can. Yeah, 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 in most yeah. places around the world. Yeah, it's just by comparison. Yeah. It seems good. <laughs> there was no excuses. No there. excuses at all? No excuses yeah, at all. Yeah, I didn't watch that game. But um, I, did, I did watch the Blues against the Drua, and what a great setup it was. It was such it was very very well put on performance, and, and the Drua gave it a hundy, which is, which is great. Yeah. You know, they, they, they went... They went hard, but I also had this. I had to watch the Wars at the same time, so did I was call, rumbled did, did, in the did, did Eden you, Park box. Did you cause some issues? I caused some issues by having the uh, Wars on my phone in the in the box. You know. Mm. Okay, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with uh, with uh, a little update on the Wars, and we'll be back in just a moment. See, so, yeah, look um, to the Wars uh, again. Part, all part of my emotional roller coaster of a weekend because after watching the Black Caps get absolutely their pants pulled down, their bodies spanked by Afghanistan. I was at the low of the low. I was like, what am I doing here? What is going on? And then I had to call the Hurricanes game, and that was fine. I'm not a big Hurricanes fan, so, but I'm glad they're through. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And then the Warriors, performance of the year. Fantastic. But against um, the reverse Cowboys. Champagne o- League. Over in Australia as well. Yeah. Absolutely, comprehensively demolished them. And um, Dallin Watini Zelezniak flicking the ball back in over the dead ball line, just his foot just in there. Set up for him, flick it back to Charles Nickel Klonkstad to put it down. That'll be in highlight reels forever, that, that try. At, I love the two players who were standing there from the Cowboys because the ball went between them and they both looked at each other and like went, how the fuck has that come back past our faces? And, yeah. there, and there was Chance just standing there, yeah. caught it and put it down and yeah. they're both looking at each other going, what? <laughs> yeah. Because he had to, um, Zelezniak had to commit 100% to that. And the chances of it sitting up for him to actually flick it back were minimal. Yeah. But he just launched himself into the hoardings, not you know, on the off chance that he's going to get a hand on it. Yeah. How, f- how freaking good. But I, I loved Adam Fenua Blake's try the most. Just dragging <laughs> five players over the line with him. I love a try like that. Oh, we're going to miss him. Yeah. We are going to miss him uh, a lot. And Pompey's, Pompey's boot. How good a kicker is he? Well, what, what do we do about um, Tamati Martin and and Shawnee J? Yeah, I mean, right. what do we, I mean? I feel like we've got all this kind of variety on tack. I mean, I don't want to be one of those guys that does a caveat, but as the reverse cowboy bo- bo- boys, they've got a few players that are shagged from State of O. Ah, yeah. Look, that's their own fault though. Yep. That's that, I mean, that's the NRL's fault. Um, they yep. shaft us year after year. So yeah. if they want to shaft themselves by you know making players play three games in a week, yeah, it's not, it's not our issue. So I mean. Will you put Shawnee J straight back in there when he's better? Uh, it's, uh, you have to. I think you have to. Um, I think you've, you potentially might find room for, for both of them, would you, in the, in the halves? I don't know. Marty Martin's so good. But um, people who know a lot more about that will be the Mad Monday pod as well, which is uh, today, I think, um, Ben Hurley. And the pants man. The pants man, Joel Harrison, made his, his debut on commentary um, uh, on the weekend with Di Henwood. He did a good job. He did a great job. Notorious pants man, Joel Harrison. He did. Obviously, he's using all that experience from the Mount Albert Mad Dogs yeah. uh, and the 90s rugby league team that he plays for and putting it onto, onto commentary. But um, Quite a height differential in that, um, in, in, that, in that booth, isn't there? Has there been a bigger height differential than Di Henwood and pants man in a commentary team? I mean, pants man is six, eight. <laughs> he's a big unit. Di is, what, five, nine? 
No, I'm 5'10". Okay. He's a little bit shorter. So, I, 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 mean, reckon be, I reckon he might be 5'6". I think Justin Harrison and Tim Horan over in Australia is about the only one that comes close. Yeah. But Tim Horan, I think, is bigger than Di Henwood. Yeah. But, uh, That's great. You, you want a big uh, height differential in the box. It obviously helps. Yep. Yeah, so that... That um that game was an absolute cracker. They're back home again this weekend against the Storm um, at seven thirty on on Saturday night. That is going to be a real test. Yeah, the Storm. I hate the Storm. It's something about the Storm I don't like either. Yeah, I hate the is Storm. It the purple. Yeah, it's the purple, and they're always good, and I hate them, and they're playing league where they shouldn't be. Yep. Um, um in some uh, in some other news, uh, did you catch the total humiliator? Firstly, there's a couple of humiliators here. This is a story that's gone quite viral. And that is the Spanish uh, walker. Uh, first of all, the sport of walking is... It's been kicked out of the, the Olympics. The, ra- the, the race walking is, is it's, it's not really a sport. But anyway, the footage is great because she's coming to the, at the arena. She's walking. Someone's given her a, a Spanish flag. She's hung it around her neck. She's had time to tie it around her neck. She's coming down the home straight. She's raising the arms. She's not even winning the race. This is just to be on the podium to come third. So obviously quite stoked about it. Arms in the air, poking the tongue out, uh, flag around the neck, two metres before the finish line, gets overtaken, doesn't win any medals. Oh, my God. <laughs> gets and overtaken by one and two. No, she was only coming third. Oh. So first of all, over-celebrating a bronze. Uh, in a, you're a race walker, one. Yeah. Over-celebrating a bronze, two. Losing the bronze. Three. <laughs> and it's a and it's a triple whammy. I mean, there's been bigger humiliations than that in walking with the old... Um, oh, Barrett. Barrett. Craig and, Barrett, yeah. And, and then there's been a few shittings of the pants and stuff in the, <laughs> over the years. But, the, but there's a great still of her realising what's happening because she's going, poking the tongue out, going, ah, and then she, at the corner of her eye she goes, ah, oh, fuck, and the... Chick just went straight past her on her right hand shoulder. Yeah, I mean, don't celebrate walking full stop. <laughs> no, this is the issue. There's so many things wrong with this. Yeah. So many things wrong. Anyway, check out the um, ACC socials uh, to check that out. Uh, it is a total humiliator. But we're going to take another quick break. And Matt Heath, we have an absolute smorgasbord of yours, please, following Friday's podcast. Uh, I think Friday's podcast is going to win us the best sports podcast of the year again next year because I, th- I, I think that was quality broadcast. I can't really remember it. I believe there's, but, some, I believe there's some thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, and yours, please. But we'll be back uh, in just a moment. Yours, please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. Radio, yours please. This is the function. If you don't know by now, it's the little microphone on your iHeartRadio app where you can just leave us a little voice memo. It comes straight into our desk and we play them out. First caller, yours please. Hey fellas, uh, any chance uh, you could have the option, like I know you can't commentate every game, but if you could have the option just to do the ACC commentary but no one's talking and it's just the, the crowd noise... <laughs> Uh, and, and the the effects mic on the on the ref, uh, but just none of this punishing Aussie commentary. Uh, that would be much appreciated. I can, I can commentate myself. Just the Aussies are punishing. I'm picking I'm picking. He's looking at things like when Manly play Penrith, stuff like that. That he doesn't want to listen to Australian commentators. He'd rather listen to nothing. Just a blank feed. Yeah, I think you. I think. Sometimes you can if you press the yellow yeah, button. I think there are some options yeah, there. Yeah, if there, you there's, there's have, the, there's, you might be able to get the clean feed. Yeah, explore that because if you've got the full sky set up, sometimes you can press the yellow button and it goes to audio options. Yeah, and you can show to an audio one where it's off completely. I um always find it odd when I go to a game and I don't have commentary how how much my uh, what I think the game is, and I go and watch a replay of it and I go, oh right, that was what was happening. I had no <laughs> no freaking idea. Or I'll do an ACC commentary and we'll have a line of chat that goes right through it and then you, you watch another commentary and you go, they've got a totally different angle on the whole game. <laughs> the commentary can really affect how you are experiencing the game. Yeah. Uh, but check that out. But um, I mean, I, Initially I thought that was a dig at us but in the end I've worked out no, that no, actually was he was, yeah, he was, was talking about. He was, was talking about other games we can't yeah. cover. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Next caller, yours please. Hey boys, it's the bloke that listens to you on 0.8 times speed here so you sound drunk. Um, look, there is no way Crusaders supporters are going to jump on the cane train, all right? There's one thing us South Islanders can agree upon, is that we fucking hate North Islanders. So <laughs> That's true. When push comes to shove, I think the Crusaders will be travelling down across the Waitaki and throwing on a blue and gold. Jeez. Thanks. Yeah, you, oh, well. See, um, there, that, that's, 
Look, I mean, you said last week yourself that that um, Cantabs only look north; they don't look south. I've never seen any love from a Cantab. I've uh, like. Was that your first bit of love from a Cantab? Yeah, that's when love was very sort of mild love. But, tough um, love, tough love, tough love, tough love. But no, I don't. I, I, Cantabs are always just looking north and giving the bird to Wellington and Auckland. They're never throwing love back to Otago, you know. Yeah, they, anyway. ne- they, ne- they never do. So, well, that's over now. So, who are they going to support now? Oh, well, that, well, they got Hurricanes, uh, Chiefs, or they got North Island. Uh, it's, it's, the worst, Brumbies. it's the worst nightmare in the world. They'll probably, the Cantabs will probably go for br- the Brumbies. Oh, right. They, that's how much they hate. They prefer um, Canberra to <laughs> that is. Buddy, Auckland, Wellington, or Hamilton. <laughs> that hurts. Uh, when you prefer Canberra uh, yeah. over, they, you know. Cantabs somebody... get absolutely barred up for Canberra. They love it. <laughs> It's actually kind of similar towns. It is actually. You've got yeah, a yeah. Know, massive porn problem. Yeah, huge porn problem. Huge lot, consumption of porn there. Yeah, massive. Uh, yeah. Both flat. Yeah, flat. Yeah. Porny. Por- a bit porny. A bit porny, yeah. Okay, next next uh, caller. You've got a few, a few to get through, so we'll fire through them. Yours, please. G'day, you absolute legends. Hey, I just wanted to talk all your chat about the colonoscopy. The procedure itself is the easiest thing in the world, but the night before, holy moly. I wrote a diary of mine from August last year. Seven o'clock, two glasses of laxatives down. Seven ten. Holy moly, this works <laughs> fast. Eight thirty-five. That was my last entry. Whoa, it's like a fire hydrant in my ass. So much flow, I need to vas. Yeah. Well, they do recommend that, don't they? They, re- they I read the you know precautions you can tell, like the you know things you can do to to help and vaselining your. Your ass is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Because it cops such a caning uh, that a bit of vas helps helps with the with the with the soreness. Over on the Matt and Jerry Daily Spoke podcast today, we asked the question: Would you prefer to have a red hot poker, a pineapple, or a Barbie doll inserted into your backside? I'm going to rush I'm, into that answer. I'm going to go. I'm I'm going Barbie. You going Barbie? Yeah. I mean, there's a few edges on Barbie. Yeah. But I mean, just the general width of Barbie. I think it's going to. Le- you are going to leave that head in there, though. Yeah, <laughs> I can deal with that. Yeah. Um, but it's going to cause a lot less damage than a pineapple or a red hot poker. Yeah, good. I, I think, think you're right. I mean, it's just it's just um, and it's just damage damage control, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, none of, not, none of the options. Ideally, you wouldn't have no. to have. No. I'm not any, getting any any pleasure. I'm not getting pleasure out of any no. of those. No. Maybe if it was just the leg of Barbie. Yeah. Maybe the arm. Yeah, the arm of Barbie would be good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next caller, yours, please. Morning, fellas. Happy Friday. Um, been pondering upon this All Blacks Hotel. Let's just spin it. Let's do the ACC Hotel. Uh, we've got Lee Hart as Chico Row Party doing stand up comedy in the Cabaret Lounge. Jason Hoyt on the front desk fucking up everyone's booking. <laughs> Matt Heath pouring drinks behind the bar and charging a bit extra so he can have one for himself. So, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts, fellas? Get in a mush. Yeah, that's. Toy floor. I did it, Um, you got to say that, yeah, that would an be, ACC hotel would be a risky business. That would be a faulty towers or a situation. So, you, so you'd be the you'd be the the CEO, the managing oh. director of the hotel. You'd be like in White Lotus, the guy that ends up shitting in the in the um, suitcase. Oh yeah, you? true actually. Yeah, yeah. The guy get, ends up on the prescription. I, th- I think we've gone into a lot of areas, the ACC, but I don't know if hotel management's really where our skills lie. I think I think he real he really nailed uh, nailed it on the head when he said uh, Jason Hoyt behind the desk fucking up everyone's bookings. Oh my god, that would so be, be no... so true. It'd be, someone would go and go. Um, we ordered a twin share. There's a double bed. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, lately, keys. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do I turn on the computer? It'll be a disaster. Yeah. Tell you what, the bar cabaret area would be good if you're yeah. if you're behind the bar and Lee's running the cabaret. Yeah, man. I mean, I'd go to the ACC hotel if that was the case. Free uh, piss on us. Yeah, and maybe Jeremy Wells is running the spa. I can oh, imagine yeah, yeah. him just running around, like oh, yeah. looking around in a robe, just rubbing people, people inappropriately. Oh. Yeah, I imagine him just walking around a robe around the entire hotel, rubbing people. Lee Baker the, as a as the bellhop, just you know, giving people terrible advice on where to get good food and demanding tips. Yeah, and dressed up with a little fez on his head. I think Paul Ford would probably be one of the you know legal maybe yeah, legal. or just and there'll be a lot of legal issues to deal with. Just someone he's like troubleshooting every yeah. whole time. He's kind of like. Um, the Captain Stubing, where he's just kind of calming everything a bit down a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's open a $150 million hotel. <laughs> what? I mean, it can't be that hard, can it? Anyway, no. yours, please. 
I hope for your sake the judges of the New Zealand Radio and Podcast Awards won't listen to yesterday's potty boys. <laughs> Otherwise, next year, you'll be lucky to win the boat race at the aftermatch. <laughs> Holy shit. Anyway. Well, we, of course, we'll win the boat race. We win the boat race every year oh, that's, that's in the given. aftermatch. But, um, yeah, look, um, we could I, just... I, look, I, just I, I actually want to push back a little bit on that, and I think it was a good podcast. I, I remember myself laughing a lot. I remember laughing you. a lot at you. Yeah, yeah. But, well, I mean, it's, it was, I was in that position where you were worse. I was terrible. But just it's always good when you've got someone that's worse than you, so you can just throw stones at them like you're not 75% or 80, <laughs> 95% as bad as them, but just because I didn't happen to sleep in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... No, I, I'd like to push back a little bit on that, and I, I think actually that might just be the entry in next year's podcast awards. Okay, then we'll like, maybe we put it under. Well, a no, I haven't heard it since we did it. No, I, I don't want. But hear I do it. remember being completely steam still and enjoying it. Yeah, let's just hope Laura and Goldrick doesn't listen to it. This one. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that bit. Um, and uh, next call it yours, please. Imagine being an old geezer and keeping up with the awards and all of that nonsense, and then you think, oh, top sports awards podcast let's fucking give them a listen you jump on the day after and what do you know it's two blokes recapping their fucking bender oh good shit good shit uh, reason why you're the top yeah that'd be funny it'd yeah. so be true. funny if someone said oh I'm, I'm never in, heard of it oh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm in the I'm, you know I've look, been looking you know for, for a sports podcast <laughs> might as well go with the best one and, and, and apparently this one's won best podcast at the New Zealand Radio and Podcast Awards so oh that seems like a good place you know I'm in the market for for a new sports podcast. Turn that on. <laughs> it's all bold as my gold as this, and G Lane's marriage is over that. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about it like that, but thank you, caller. That's really brought oh, back that, a whole lot of demons it'd be, now. It'd be the kind of thing management just kind of would say, look, yeah, hey, you've just won best podcast, so you know there'd be some new new people coming yep. to listen to this. Yeah. So just you know, you know, maybe 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 do a, do a quality, you know, something good. Showcase what you got. You know, put your best front put best foot forward. No, nah, nah, no, no. Nah. Anyway, nah. this is the last one. Um, hopefully, not digging Hopefully, out. more positive this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yours, please. What? Fuck yeah, boys. Fresh off winning the best pod in New Zealand. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And you just sealed it again. That pod, that pod, fucking pod perfection. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo. That's what Fuck yeah, boys. They do it. Oh, oh yes. Uh, yes, vindication. I needed that sweet I, vindication for our <laughs> art. I needed that. I've got so little serotonin. Oh, I yeah. got so little, but that has brought back just oh, a little bit more. Oh, Thank you. That's so good. Thank you so much. And, Thank you, caller. And and you've validated us and enabled us to continue to be absolute pieces of shit going <laughs> forward. To just know that we get rewarded. The worse we behave, the more we get rewarded. Uh, I think we'll knock this one on the head on the Shall Monday. I? Yeah, I think we should. We've I'm got. Still, I'm still. Full disclosure, quite low on the serotonin. Oh, I'm, I'm, I am still a, sh- a shadow of a man. I'm a shell of myself. Yeah, there's not a lot of self love going on. No, there's not. Well, and there's quite a lot of self love going on, but not a lot of self love. Absolutely, and you yeah. know, it's things are tough at home. Yeah, uh, and tough, I bet they're a bit tough at work as well. To be honest, uh, with yeah. that bill that came in. Yeah, the I'm two and a half thousand dollars yeah, you spent on booze. Yeah, I'm still trying to but, navigate my way around that one as you're well. Really, you're really under the pump. Uh, <laughs> really, it's really a rough. Rough patch in the G Lane's like, auspicious career. I did try and think about have I been through a worse set of scenarios, you know, like that I've been through, and I'm trying to think of it just compounded. And I've, I've individually, I've I've dealt with those situations before, but not over a weekend or not over a yeah. twelve hours. Well, so, I think I think uh, we, I think we said it on the podcast on, on Friday, and I think it's worth reiterating the point that um, you know, you know, you've had a shitter when your wife would be less disappointed if she found you cheating on her. Yeah. Mm. Than she was. Yes. With what you did. Correct. So I think that's a real far less cooler as well. It's a yeah, it's a real bar. Yeah. Yeah. Real low bar. <laughs> I think she I think she would have taken the ladder. She would have been fine with that. Yeah. She'd be like <laughs> Just what? just get here to drop the kids at school, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> even if even if you've got the girl driving the car. <laughs> it's like, at least he got there. At least he got there to drop the kids off. He did. He's sleeping with someone else and he has Bought her to pick up the kids, but you know. <laughs> anyway, we'll knock right. this on there. We're okay. back tomorrow. Uh, Manai is back from Bali tomorrow, so we'll no doubt um, uh, hear some stories about that. And plus, we've got a, a profile. The T Twenty World Cup continues throughout the week as well. But don't forget to have a, uh, a deep dive into the T Twenty World Cup with the BYC podcast out later this afternoon. See you later. All right then. You seem busy. 
You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast, brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.